welcome and good morning. Welcome and good morning from us at Open Doors to you and all of your homes and the places where you're, you are this morning. As we come together, as we gather virtually or through BevCom to worship the Lord God. And so may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this morning. So we just have a, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, continue to watch for the Monday updates, which I do on Facebook right around noon. Uh, continue to watch for the Wednesday devotionals, which is right around 2.30, between 2.30 and 3. Um, I usually come over and start at about 2.30, but sometimes there's technical difficulties, internet stuff. Um, so right in that general area. So if you look by 3 o'clock, it'll definitely be up by then. And I just ask you to continue to like, share, comment on our videos. Um, as you like them and share them, they get out to a bigger audience, more people can see them, and we get a chance to reach even more people in our community and the wider area. And then also, it's always nice to just see comments of, I'm here, good morning, God be with you, whatever you want to say to us. It's always nice to see those comments, so please keep those coming. It was really wonderful uh, last week when we had everybody saying Happy Easter, and I'd love to see that every morning, uh, sort of a virtual passing of the peace. So if you'd like to do that, please comment on the video. I also just want to say, continue to say thank you for supporting us at this uh, difficult time. Um, please continue to uh, help us out. Uh, you can go on the website and you can give things, give through virtually. Um, you can also put stuff into the, the door that has 595. I know a lot of you have found that as a useful tool, so please continue to do that. And just continue to support us as we go through this time as well. And we continue to try to reach out to you virtually or through BevCom in the different ways in which I speak to you, in the different ways in which we are connecting with you in this time. And I hope you're all staying safe and at home and following the rules to which have been put forward to us so we can continue to help each other out and make sure this virus is beaten so we can all kind of go back to normal life here. Hopefully soon, um, but we don't know. That's kind of uh, where we're at right now. So with that, why don't we turn with our service to our opening prayer. So wherever you are, would you pray with me? Dear Lord, can you continue to be our hope? Continue to turn us to the hope through Jesus Christ who died on the cross, went to the tomb, and then rose again for us. We thank you so much for this day and for all that you have given to us. We pray for all those around us who are going through difficult times. We pray for the people who have reached out to tell us how they're doing, the things that are going right and wrong in their lives. We pray for all the people affected by this coronavirus. May your hope spread throughout this world, hope that is in Jesus Christ. And we thank you so much for that hope. We pray all these things in the name of your Son who also taught us to pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who indeed trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, our first reading today comes to us from the book of 1 Peter. It's chapter 1, 3 through 9. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiable, unfading, and kept in heaven for you. Who are heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you suffer various trials, so that your genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable, glorious joy. For you are the receivers and the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
And then we turn to our gospel reading and I invite you to stand wherever you're at. And this comes to us in the book of John, chapter 20, 19 through 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the houses, or the door of the house where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in his hand and in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out and put your hand in my side. Do you now doubt, but do not doubt, but believe? And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not, yet, have not seen, and yet they come to believe. Now Jesus did, other, or did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and though through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today we return back to that day, the day of the resurrection, the day we say he is risen. And we go back to that day, and if you remember, Mary and Mary have gone to the tomb, they have seen and they have gone back. In fact, Mary Magdalene has met Jesus and has gone out to tell everybody she can. But we find the disciples later that day in a room, a locked room, for fear of the Jews, it tells us. So they've locked themselves in this place, and they're essentially just living in fear. And it's into that that Jesus comes and he says, Peace be with you. And they rejoice for seeing Jesus Christ, the Lord, who has indeed risen and returned to them. But it tells us that one wasn't there to see this, and that's Thomas, the one we would come to, to know as Doubting Thomas. And they tell Thomas, we've seen Jesus. He's appeared before us. He said, peace be with you. They're all probably joyful and amazed at this. And Thomas says, I will not believe it. I will not believe it unless I see Jesus and not just see Jesus. I want to take my finger and I want to put it in his palm where the nail was. I want to put my hand in his side where the spear was. Frankly, it's a little gross, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to be able to put his hand literally in the holes in Jesus' hands. Thomas doesn't just want proof. He wants absolute proof. Can you imagine that? He doesn't just want to know. He wants to touch and know that this is a Jesus or he will not believe. Well, the time, the time moves forward. In fact, it tells us a whole week passes. I always find that an interesting thing. A whole week passes and where are the disciples? They're still in that locked room. They've been waiting this whole time and they're in the locked room. I imagine they're waiting for Thomas to be able to get his proof. And so they're waiting in that room, and suddenly Jesus appears, and Thomas sees him, and Jesus, knowing what Thomas wants, says, Come, put your hands here into my palms where the holes were. Put your hand here where the spear was. See and believe. And Thomas falls before him and says, My Lord and my God, he acknowledges who Jesus is. And Jesus says to them, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they still believe. Now let's, let's go back 
to that locked room. Let's go back to the locked room before Jesus has appeared for anybody, or at least any of the disciples at that point. You know, I imagine that's a place of worry, of fear. That's a place where they realize they have lost all control of what's going on. When you look at what has happened to them, they have gone from Palm Sunday at this point. Palm Sunday where they rode in triumphantly. People were throwing palms, a symbol of the, of the Jewish people, in front of Jesus to walk on. They were proclaiming him, the Messiah essentially. They were calling him to save them. That was a joyful thing. It seemed like probably at that point they knew exactly what was going to happen. They had a lot of hope in the future. And then Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday happened. Jesus was taken from them. He was put on a cross. He was killed. And he was put in a tomb. And to their knowledge at that point, as far as they know, that's where Jesus still is dead and in a tomb, or maybe they think his body has gone because one of the disciples have told, has told them that. But at this point, their hope has died with Jesus. They are hopeless in that place. They are hopeless and afraid of what's going to happen, and they, don't, they, have, they realize they've lost all this control. And it is to that that Jesus appears. Now, notice that I say he appears because The Bible tells us that the door is locked and Jesus still appears in there. It just shows the power of Jesus. And he appears and what's the first thing he says? He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. You see, what he's doing is he's giving them back their hope. That hope that they lost when Jesus was put on the cross because they had put all of their hopes and their dreams into this person, Jesus Christ. Remember what had happened and for most of the disciples was Jesus just called them and they dropped everything they were doing and put all their fear, all their hope and their future and their control in this Jesus Christ and then he had gone and died on the cross. But I imagine Jesus just kind of wants to shake them and say, did you not know? I told you. I was going to die and be ro- and rise again. Was it that you didn't understand or did you not believe or did you put your hope in the wrong thing? But there Jesus is, as he always is. He comes back to give them back their hope, to give them back hope in the future. And in fact, we know he does because from that, that time forward, the disciples go and they go out into all the world. And many of them go to martyrdom. Martyrdom, they were killed with the truth of Jesus Christ on their lips because they are living into a hope that is bigger than this world. They are living into the hope of Jesus Christ who surpasses all the things of this world, that conquers this world, that is Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, that holds everything in his hands. But Jesus Christ comes into a place of fear, of worry, of care, of isolation. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like maybe the world some of us are living in now? A world of fear, isolation, a worry, a place in which maybe hopes are being lost, where we are all too aware of our loss of control, all too aware of all the things out there that we cannot control and that in a way we are subject to. Now I hope you're, again, doing all the things that you're told to do, stay inside, social distancing, all that kind of stuff. But I also hope that you've put your hope in Jesus Christ. I also hope or I, I hope, 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 I believe that you have hope. My wish for you is that your hope is like that of the disciples, a hope that is in something bigger than this world, a hope that is in Jesus Christ, who is with us always by the power of the empty tomb, by the power of those words, he is risen. My wish for you is that you still have hope amidst this time, like what we say even when we mourn, we, are not, we do not mourn as people who do not have hope because our hope is in something beyond this world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Now you're probably saying, but Pastor Chris, Jesus appeared before them. He bodily appeared before them. Think of doubting Thomas. He got to put his hands in the holes in Jesus' hands. He got to touch the side where the spear was. He got to hold the risen Christ It's so much easier then, isn't it? And it's true. It's true we don't have the bodily Jesus Christ standing before us to touch and to hold. 
But what did Jesus say? Jesus said when he goes on, who will be the hands and feet? Who will be the new hands that have been crucified, that have been raised again? Who will be the new hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the world? That's us. We are indeed the body of Christ in this world. And I can tell you I've seen some pretty amazing things amidst this time of coronavirus. The hands and feet of Jesus Christ now in this world are the frontline people, the people that are out there taking care of the sick and the dying in this world, the nurses and the doctors who have put themselves in danger to show care and give hope to those people who are sick. It's the teachers who have changed over so they can continue to reach their students. I have a kindergartner, and I'm so amazed at how the teachers of this area have reached out to the kids. Noah has meetings on the internet. He has classes that he does. And I see the care. I see his teacher saying hi to Noah and tell him she misses him. It's an amazing thing to see just how much they care about these students and they're willing to continue to reach out to them. That's the hands of Christ in this world, giving hope to people. Our own Dave who built our little pantry and put it out there so somebody who's hungry can stop by and grab some food. That's giving hope to somebody. When we are doing what we are called to do as the body of Christ, we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, giving hope to all the people around us. Because that's what Jesus does. He gives us hope. He gives us something to put our hope into that is beyond this world, that is beyond the virus, beyond all the things of this world. For he is indeed Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. And he holds us all in his hands. Brothers and sisters, I hope, I wish that you find hope this day. My wish for you is that your hope will be built in Jesus Christ, something that cannot be taken away, something that is undefiable, as Peter tells us, something that we are now a part of because Jesus Christ has brought us into his hope, a hope that passes all understanding and that gives us peace in this world. I wish for you to have hope today because as the tomb is empty, may your lives be filled with hope this day. Amen. So this day, may you stay in. May you get out a little bit. May you go into this day with the hope of Jesus Christ in your hearts. And may that hope bring you through all the things of life. May that hope be bigger than all of your fears because Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, is bigger than this world. Is bigger than all the things going on. And may you continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ so that they may see and know, so that they may also have hope in him who died on the cross and rose in the empty tomb for us. Hope be with you this morning. So you may go out and love and serve the Lord. Amen.